this section uh, is about the um, trespassing that might be occurred during our daily conduct and it focus on the heart and mind, the thoughts, because thought is the source of all conducts, or source of our conduct, source of our uh, speech. You know, we, without thought, we don't we don't say much, right? So obviously, we still need to use our thought in our daily encounters, but um, to use it properly in accordance to the path, uh, so that we can avoid the um, karma, negative karma or negative result consequences that would be fall upon us if we commit it. So that's the whole um, rationale of this uh, session. So first sentence, uh, we have talked talk about the first sentence briefly, first and second one, as seen in the um, screenshot. Uh, please inform me, Auntie Enzo, if it's too small. Um, the first one summarized the whole thing because behind there are hundreds and hundreds of um, uh, sections to talk about. Um, so this one is a summary. So this one is about, you know, it, it may seem like a common sense. It says disregard one's conscience uh, to do, you know, vicious thoughts. They don't even say things. They haven't done vicious things, but thoughts. Even that is, itself is already um, a breach uh, and would uh, be attractive to the negative karma to us. And then acting contrary to what is fair and reasonable, you know, um, this is more on the action. First one is about the thoughts that are against the, um, you know, against your own conscience, what is right. And th the second one is follow through that uh, thoughts, the vicious thoughts, you act against what is fair and reasonable. So this is a natural progression. So um, think about our minds like a monkey. You know, we always have a word called monkey mind, jumping around and, you know, always wanting to see something, catch something, play something, you know, be curious about stuff. Um, a lot of us uh, in the worldly eyes, it might be, uh, how to say, a great thing, you know, it opens up invention, discoveries and all that. But in terms of the cultivations of oneself, if you want to really achieve, uh, how to say, balance, uh, achieve our, how to say, control over our self, self uh, full self-awareness, we need to give it a bit of a boundaries. Otherwise, um, if it's benevolent, it might be, you know, just a harmless prank and stuff. But if you let that mind go wild, uh, small harm will be mental health or anything. Like, you know, you're overthinking and things get worse, spiraling out of control. Um, the, the, wor the, the worst part, I mean, the, but the worst case might be you might harm other people as well if you're allowing this uh, wandering mind because you don't know what kind of condition you encounter. This is not pure land, as in in the practical sense. Like this is not our current situation is not what we see, what we hear, what we what we hear in our mind, what we see in our in our world is not hundred percent pure. It's not a. This is a sahawo. So what what we see is that any condition might turn our life in that trajectory that we don't want or we never thought we would walk onto. So think of it, our mind as a monkey, like a monkey. And what is conscience and what is fair and reasonable is like the ropes that lash onto the wild horse or the, um, let's say maybe um, ropes that uh, carries us when we hang from the cliff, something like that prevents from falling. So if a wild horse would not uh, put on leash and put on you know control, it will run amok and uh, how to say uncontrollably uh, smash something along its way or something. So having a conscience, having what is fair and reasonable allows us to have uh, a framework to work on and it helps us to build our um, merits and fortunes. That's where it comes from. Uh, having constraints, having uh, appropriate amount of constraint. Obviously, we can relax and we can be ourselves. Um, but the point is, everything has has a boundary. Has a, I would say, everything has its uh, bottom line. And if we do things without bottom line, we end up hurting people because we do not think of the consequences. So this is basically what it is: from thoughts to actions, the natural progressions. So this one sums up everything. So everything that is against conscience, 
uh, they are considered crimes and offenses in karmic way. And acting upon these um, vicious thoughts, you will, your action will be on the contrary to what is fair and reasonable. So if we move on to the second sentence, the er way nen ren zuo chan hai, ren zuo chan hai. So first one is to boost one evil as strength. I mentioned it last time, a lot of misunderstanding of strength. You know, might is right. While it may stand true for still in this world, it might stand true in terms of military, in terms of, you know, um, you know monopoly, monopoly of violence. I use a very academic term in politics. Monopoly of violence means only police and government can have the access to its, uh, you know, inflicting uh, necessary force to enforce the law and order. That's the part, the you know, that's the academic term for it. But what, what we want to say about this is more on the personal conduct, the the society mindset, the mindset of the individuals and society. If we uh if a person use uh, one's uh, how to say un wrongdoing as a sign of strength, for example, maybe using tactics, maybe using underhand underhanded tactics uh, to gain something from others at the expense of theirs. Uh, their well-being or their you know their position or anything um, that is considered evil and obviously you need to be smart enough to do that and people might thought this is what we call capability so there's a lot of uh, twisting of narratives you know someone who can speak very well eloquent in their speech very sharp wit they can twist the narrative in their favors instead of it is what it is because sometimes the reality can be very straightforward. It does not, you know, necessarily have so much layer of overthinking on it. But because we have different perceptions, we add a lot of colors to it. It might be easily misled if um, malicious intent was added to it. Um, and also, uh, you know, what is capability in Ch and in in in, uh, in Chinese? This is also mean capability, strength, capability. You know, doing something on the uh, against your conscience and fair and reasonable as a sign of capability, as you can see easily from mafias, from the um, those are obvious ones, um, from the school bullies, uh, in a sense, you know, the popular guys, you know, it doesn't have to be physical bully, you can be verbally bully, uh, humiliate, something like that, you know, using influence, using um, whatever you have at hand that um, to cost. A, a effect on other people that harms them mentally or physically. So, and, you know, like this kind of mindset is still there and, you know, um, and and the reason it's still there is because uh, lacking of the proper understanding on consequences, cause and effect. Even though I may sound like a broken hate machine at this stage, keep talking about consequences, cause and effect. Uh, trust me, Master Ching has been doing that 60 years and a lot of the ancient people, uh, the good people in you know, the sage, they've been talking about this forever. It may sound, you know, same old narrative, but the reason is, it is like that. That That's the reality. You know, you know we, can't, we can't describe it any more than what we could see. You know, karma is something is... Um, very intimate as the shadow is to your body. It, it's very close to you because it's caused by you. Without, um, uh, without how to say, understanding to this, we will succumb easily towards this kind of um, actions because, you know, uh, we live in a society and if the whole direction of the society is going towards, you know, an, uh, unkind, um, a very selfish or very, um, uh, lack of a sense of communities, then it will, you know, it, it will, it will gradually grow on towards, uh, move towards a polarized or conflicts. So, if without going too far, this is also this is the epitome. I mean, this is the this is the effect of having, uh, you know, your monkey might run run about. It's a very uh, negative effect. Uh, one of the case. And the last one is to inflict cruelties with cold heart. This can be particularly applies when it comes to animals. Um, you know, when it comes to you know what we eat on the table, like we talk about vegetarianism and stuff like that. Why? You know, because human we um, in in current society we don't have to hunt to survive, and we have means to make 
uh, more food for more people. And obviously, the real world, you know, there's still distribution market issues. But the thing is that we still have we have means not to, you know, use this kind of um, violence against the animal in order to obtain our proteins or all that. We can just get it from the plants. Um, so this one, uh, think about, you know, the dishes, you know, that involves a lot of um, killing and boiling. For example, you know, in Chinese, there's a dish called zui, zui xia or zui pang uh, you know, the crab. They, are in, uh, they drunk the crab with the alcohol let it walk itself walk itself into the into the pool of spice and then it's all the very strong alcohol 80% 90% to marinate it and and then while it's strong then you cook it alive into the hot pot we don't see it as cruelty because it's a different species but if we use the same logic that you know a human was being treated this like this then it's very easy to understand where this is going um, obviously, this can go to a rapid hole if not, this topic can go down the rapid hole, you know, what if plants have life and all that. The point is, we want to reduce uh, the amount of harm towards the surroundings in order to get what we need to survive.